Color lithographic printing was the medium of the Victorian era. Design was often based on the creative ideas of original artists. Design was no longer done on a compositor's metal press board, but on the drawing board. Oftentimes the firm got the credit and not the artist, so many of these prints we don't even know who the artist was. But we do know that in 1846, Richard Ho perfected the rotary lithographic press. It was nicknamed the Lightning Press, and this increased production sixfold relative to the flatbed presses then in use. This created an important competition in the market against letter presses. Color printing became economical. John H. Buford was the next inventor to add improvements. He often used five or more color. These posters are both masterpieces. His designs were realistic and meticulous attention was paid to the placement of image in relation to the text. Louis Prang was a prolific Victorian graphics chromolithographer. He put vivid color into the hands of the masses. He generated millions of little cards called scraps that the public collected, similar to baseball cards. In the Victorian tradition, his chromolithography became an expression of the period's love for sweetness and nostalgia. I want you to research what were Louis Prang's contributions to the graphic design of the Victorian era because his contributions are formidable and important. As a side note, he often used 40 or more stones for one design. On this slide, we're going to look at various samples of Victorian era graphic design. I want you to tell me what are the design characteristics of chromal lithography. We will discuss this once again in class. Labels and packaging became important areas for chromal lithography. By the end of the century, the heyday of chromal lithography was coming to an end with the development of photo engraving. Now, Western countries treated their children as little adults, and the Victorian era helped to develop a more tender attitude towards children. This was expressed through toy books, which were colorful little picture books for preschool children. It's not clear who invented the form, but Walter Crane is acknowledged as one of the earliest and influential designers of children's books. Early children's books usually had a moral or religious tone, but Crane's books were solely for entertainment purposes. He was the first artist who broke with the tradition of printed material for children, and he remained active into the 20th century and also played a role in the arts and crafts movement, which we will discuss in an upcoming chapter. Randolph Caldecott was another artist who made innovations in the category of imagery for children. He had a wonderful way of animating faces on both his people and animals and brought a sense of whimsy to his drawings. His humorous drawing style became a prototype for children's books and animated films. I want you to think about Walt Disney right here. Kate Greenway is another artist who captured the imagination of the Victoria era, even though her designs were highly criticized. Her page design was innovative in her use of space and her focus on imagery. I want you to tell me how did Kate Greenway's design influence Victorian society, and also for your journal entry for this weekend, what Gestalt principles do you see illustrated in these two layouts? This brings us to the rise of American editorial and advertising design. James and John Fletcher launched a New York printing firm in the early 19th century and were joined by their brothers Fletcher and Wesley. By mid-century, they were the largest printing and publishing firm in the world. Fletcher Harper, as the senior editor and manager, shaped graphic communications in America for half a century. Inventive design was not a concern for publishing firms at this time, but large press runs and modest prices were. These are two examples of the publications that were printed by the Harper brothers, Harper's Magazine and Harper's Weekly. They were also joined by Harper's Bazaar for Women, and Harper's Young People. One of the talented young artists who contributed to this magazine was Thomas Nast. He was actually found by Fletcher Harper at the age of 22 to make Civil War sketches. Thomas Nast is very important. 
His work received presidential accolades and the Harper Weekly circulation increased from 100,000 to 300,000 copies per issue because of Thomas Nast contribution. He has been called the father of the American political cartoon. Nast drew his images directly on the woodblock in reverse for the craftsmen to cut. His political and social concern led him to simplify his drawings and reduce symbols and labels for increased communication of ideas through his work. A few of the images he brought to the public were the Santa Claus, the Democratic Donkey, the Republican Elephant, Uncle Sam, and Columbia. The power of his illustrations came to life when Nast took on governmental corruption in New York and William Marcy Tweed, who controlled New York politics. This cartoon portrays the Tammany Tiger, Tweed, and his Tammany Hall attacking liberty with Tweed as a Roman Empire surrounded by his posse. The opposition won in a huge election, and I quote Tweed when I say, they could see them damn pictures. So truly, a picture does say a thousand words. A collection of Victoria ads with a wide range of styles is shown in this slide. Because basically during the Victorian era, any type of advertising slogan or scam or plan was thought up. So really, when we look at some of our advertising schemes right now, we can go right directly back to the Victorian era and see where they all came from. But what's nice about this slide is you see such a wide range of styles from on the far left to image dominant to right in the middle where you have a text dominant style. Now, as the Victorian era progressed, elaborate ornate typefaces came into type fashion. The passion for Victorian typefaces began to decline in the 1890s, yielding to a revival of classical topography. And these are just a few examples of some of the Victorian topography available at the time. Here's an example of the outlandish and fantasy lettering style that enjoyed great popularity and made trademarks of the era reflecting this Victorian love of ornamental complexity. So in conclusion, the popular graphics of the Victorian era came from the common attitudes and sensibilities of the period. And conventions could still be seen in the early decades of the 20th century, especially in commercial promotion.